NFL DFS picks, strategy, lineup advice, Q&A, the whole nine yards for week four NFL main slate on DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo. I'm your host, Moose, at CFE underscore Moose on Twitter. I'm here from OccupyFantasy.com, at OccupyFantasy on Twitter. I'm alongside co-host and single-game million-dollar winner, Brian, at Brian Jester FF on Twitter. What's going on, man? What's up, Moose? How you doing today? I'm, I'm all right. I, uh, I took the dog to the dog park, and for the first time ever, I've seen uh, there was a person there without a dog actively enforcing the rules. And I was like, what? Oh, that person clearly has a life. <laughs> I say as we are talking to strangers on the internet about fake football teams. Yes, sir. As Jake <laughs> says, what a narc. Um, <laughs> For real, though. Yeah. What's up, Jake? Glad to have you in the chat here. I'm going to go ahead and get this tweeted out while I do that. Um, just to let you know, guys, if you are watching this replay on YouTube, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and ding-dong bell notification to be notified of when we go li- or when we upload new videos to the YouTube channel. If you're watching this replay here on Twitch, make sure you hit that follow button so you get notified of when we go live. If you're here watching it with us live, go ahead and say what's up. Um, be cool like Jake and say what's up. And uh, we'll be here for roughly, we normally do about 45 minutes or so, chatting it up, talking about some stuff. And uh, let's jump right into it. Brian, what's your, uh, what do you think about the slate? Yeah, so right before we went live, about five minutes before we went, we went live, it was announced that Le'Veon Bell uh, is ruled out. He had missed the last couple of practices with an... Uh, an illness of some sort. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not really clear what the illness is, but he is now officially out. And uh, fortunately, Chris did an NBA style if then in the daily plug, <laughs> uh, which normally we don't have to do because most of the time we have uh, detailed information about injuries as of Friday when Chris writes it. But mm-hmm. just to write what, just to relay what Chris wrote, I know it's behind the paywall, but for everyone listening to this, I think it's a um, Chris wrote this last night, Friday night. Le'Veon Bell seems far more likely to miss on Sunday. Having missed two late week practices with an illness, Bilal Pau, who uh, Jake is talking about in the chat right now, Blau, has Blau. Seen, Blau Pau has seen six plus touches in four straight games in a change of pace role. Mm-hmm. So he seems to have the best bet to have increased work for the Jets if this plays out. As five and a half point favorites at home against the Dolphins, Pau would be a must start in low risk contest if Le'Veon Bell misses state and bell is now ruled out so gonna continue with what chris said it's, we're gonna check out some beat reporters just to make sure that is the case but uh, at Bilal powell's price basically minimum price on both sites mm-hmm. uh, pretty much is a must play in low risk concept yeah i mean before his you know his of index is like nine or ten i assume that's probably going to jump up to what maybe like 20 25 once uh, everything updates i maybe, would maybe think even so. higher yeah we'll have to see what happens when it updates again it's Saturday afternoon, it's not uh, a pressing update. Normally, it, uh, you know, every hour or so uh, on the weekends, we'll get this injury news in there. So <laughs> we'll see. I- I'm really curious to see it. 4,900 Fandle, so pretty much minimum, and then 3,500 DraftKings. Yeah, I think we have to like the spot that he's in. The The only issue for me is we're not thrilled to play Le'Veon Bell every week, but Le'Veon Bell's also not 4,900 or 3,500. So <laughs> that... uh. That that price difference makes uh makes a huge. Yeah, no, I totally understand with that, especially in low risk where you want to fit in your. I know you, we talk about fitting in stud wide uh, running backs, and you have someone like Chris McCaffrey that's you know over ten thousand dollars, eleven thousand on Fanduel. That really helps you clear up some salary. It allows you to fit in the, the you know someone like him. You can run it back maybe like Nick Chubb, Alvin Kamara, another uh, great higher price running back in your third in your flex spot. Uh, you know, to help, uh, you know, make your ceiling go a little bit higher, floor get a little bit higher. Sorry, for sure. No, absolutely. And it's not like Blau Powell is going to take all the work. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ty Montgomery is going to get in the mix some as well. It's just that it looks like since Blau Powell's return and since Sam Darnold's come back, Powell has been the number two running back. So again, we will have to see what the beat reporters are saying. But just every indication so far of the last couple of weeks on how they've used the running backs, Bilal Powell, I would imagine, you know, 60, 70% of the work. Um, But there is some risk. He could get 
thirty percent of the work, could get fifty percent of the work. It's not a it's not a slam dunk per se like Jalen Samuels' week was. Mm-hmm. But so what about high risk contest moves? If you're making multiple lineups, do you think? And obviously we don't have the model updated yet to kind of uh, to have a crutch for us to answer this. But do we go one hundred percent Bilal Powell, or is it a different situation? So I'm looking here. I'm trying to think kind of what the model, how it would work. And since it's in the process of updating now, it'll be updated in about 15 or so minutes. Um, I say no. I say not necessarily no 100%. I think this is one of the times when we did the back testing, we found out that there was a basically a, like a nobody would play a running back with like 60 to 99%. I think this is one of those times where you just match the field with him. Let's say his 25% ownership, maybe a little bit higher, 35%. Um, that's kind of the route that I would take. Yeah, I think that's fair too. I'm I'm really curious because I about an hour or so before we went live here, I was uh, in the lab, DFS Magic, working on some FanDuel lineups. And none of the running backs really stood out that much to me anyways. And there's a lot of expensive receivers that I like and a lot of expensive game stacks that I like. So um, I, I think it depends on, on what you're doing, what the rest of your lineup looks like. I could very easily see myself going a ton of Bilal Powell if, if, if uh, it looks like he'll get a much of the workload. Mm-hmm. Um, just based on some of the other guys that I do, like some of the expensive underperformed receivers, some of the expensive game stacks. So we'll have to see. And as Chris wrote in the plug, he, he talked about potentially stacking that game, Jets and and the Dolphins, and if that's the case, you're going to have them in a ton of lineups too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have AJ in the chat who is a uh, Twitch Prime subscriber. For those who don't know, uh, if you are a subscriber through us, you can do it through Amazon Prime for free, or you can do it through Twitch if you don't have Amazon Prime. You get access to our Discord server, which is really, really awesome. We'd love to, to chat over there, have a lot of fun, talk a bunch of showdown stuff, um, a lot of NBA, some college football as well. Uh, his question is, I know... Typically, the strat of quarterback and running back in a game stack isn't normally ideal, but if we go with someone like Tannehill, Henry, and a wide receiver, then bring it back with Waller, that would likely cover every score, or is that just a donkey move? And, you know, as Jake pointed out, that that, uh, Tennessee stack popped off a few weeks ago. Yeah, I don't think it's bad at all, Um, especially if that running back can catch some passes, and they don't, you know, use henry a ton in the passing game but they do develop some screen plays play for him from time to time and if you think tennessee's really going to explode and uh, that is a game with one of the higher totals on the board i don't mind it at all uh i don't think our model or the underperforming receivers list really likes any of the guys in that game i know waller is, is one of the guys we do like a lot for oakland mm-hmm. um so picking that receiver for Tennessee is tough, and it's part of the reason why I probably won't stack that game. But as far as the strategy goes and the lineup construction, it's not bad at all. And, uh, um, you know, for a team like Tennessee that likes to run the ball a ton and get Henry involved a lot, maybe it's even preferred over a quarterback receiver receiver stack. Yeah, that definitely agree with you on that. Um, you know, as Chris comes in the chat here who uh, wrote this daily plug, he says, welcome to Bilal Powell Chalk Week, gentlemen. Um, and I, I do want to make a, a, a comment here about a sentence that he wrote that is in front of the paywall. Um, where is it? Lamar Jackson, Chris McCaffrey, and Michael Thomas remain playable in all formats. Like it's low risk, especially you know we, we the plugs mainly geared toward low risk. It's where a lot of people should be playing their money. With someone like Blau Powell, it does allow you to fit those three uh, high studs in, which I kind of mentioned earlier before. Yeah, no, it 100% does. So McCaffrey, especially, who is top of the model, um, despite his high price tag, makes a ton of sense to to pair with Bilal Powell in any contest type. Michael Thomas, of course, is going to continue to give volume. Lamar Jackson, the only issue with him for me this week is the weather, and we saw him still ball out against a tough defense in the in the conditions last mm-hmm. week in San Francisco, still ran for 100 yards and a touch. Um, so he's always going to have that floor. I just don't know if the upside is going to be there. That he usually has, if I think it's like 20 mile an hour winds, 30 mile per hour gust, and that's the only true weather game that we have to be concerned about. Yeah, uh, that's what I was looking here. He's mid pack of the model, but our model has gotten him wrong <laughs> more times than not. Um, yeah, he's he's increased. I'm looking here. He's increased since opening the model this week by about two of index points. Um, it must be a really good spot then if uh, the model likes Lamar. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so the first thing that's in, I guess the only thing that's in front of the in front of the paywall here is the games to stack. And each week, Chris takes three games, roughly three games, sometimes less, and uh, he makes note on why he likes those as a stack. Uh, the first game, Pitt at Arizona. I guess I don't need to introduce you to this one, Brian, because you do this, you do Arizona stack every week. Uh, what's going on with you? How do you like it? Yeah, I, um, yeah, Chris and I were talking about this a little bit earlier, and I, I'm not as big on Arizona anymore as I as I used to be, just because of uh, the, it's just not exciting to stack any of the guys on their side. But mm-hmm. I do think this could be a situation for a three by one stack from Pittsburgh side, and uh, a couple of reasons. One, we have Benny Snell, who with James Conner ruled out, Juju Smith Schuster ruled out. Benny Snell has gotten like 39 touches the last two weeks. Arizona, really easy to run on, very generous to opposing running backs. So Snell makes sense. And then Arizona likes to play fast, and and by nature, the other team scores a good amount of points as well, especially through the air. And Deontay Johnson is on her underperforming receiver list, hasn't popped off in the box scores the last couple of weeks despite decent volume. So him and James Washington, all those guys. And then, of course, can't mention an Arizona game without talking about the tight end. Vance McDonald, uh, you know, I thought Higby put it to the test last week and crushed the exam yeah. of how shitty of a tight end can we play against Arizona. <laughs> uh, I think we have to continue to use it with Vance McDonald here. Yeah. So three or four guys on that side for Steelers that I like. And then on, on Arizona side, maybe Christian Kirk, who just missed the underperforming receivers list. Maybe Larry Fitzgerald, who's dust. And maybe Kenyon Drake, who is the, the bell cow back now. Um so yeah, that, that that's my general thoughts. I think more of a Steelers heavy approach in this one. Yeah, no, I, and there are actually a lot of three by one stacks that I, that I like this week. Um, yeah, yeah. There's you know the one is did, did Chris mention it here? Let me take a look. No, he hasn't mentioned it. Uh, but the one that I like is uh, the Chargers and Jacksonville. Um, yeah. That's a I, I like that. That's a pretty good one there. I, I I'm a big fan of that one too, mostly because it has Mike Williams. We'll see if Bismo has his Mike Williams alert on a Saturday. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Mike Williams, permanent resident on the underperforming receivers list. Chris Conley makes an appearance this week. So you got two guys from the same game. And then, of course, you got two – you at least got one high-volume running back with Leonard Fournette. Melvin Gordon in a good matchup. Uh, Keenan, Hunter Henry, DJ Chark. Like, lots of guys from this game. I know it's a low total, but if you go three-by-one or even two-by-one, th- th- there's tons of opportunity for three or four times value for multiple guys. Yep. Um, and, uh, AJ says, uh, he's actually not going to play pal. He thinks the dude will not play well. Um, that's definitely one way to go about it. I, I would say he, of these, what, three situations where we've had these injuries midweeks, like basically men price running back, Bilal is the least safest of them. Would you agree with that? Uh, I thought Brian Hill was, was pretty safe and he d- didn't end up. Yeah, but I, I do think just from a workload standpoint, yeah. how isn't as safe as some of those guys. Um, like Hill, even in Hill's chalk week, he was still he still got what 15, 16 touches. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not sure that Powell will get that. We think he'll get that, but we're not one hundred percent sure by any means. So, um, really interesting scenario in high risk contests. I think. I think low risk, you still almost have to play him unless you just have some information that he's not going to play a ton, <laughs> which I don't. I don't know if we'll get. Yeah, and, and speaking of that, Jake says, you know, Ty Montgomery could be a high risk leverage play. Uh, do you have? Do you think that that could be the case? Maybe, and he's actually. Hold on one second. I can pull up one thing I was just looking at, and um, Montgomery as out targeted Powell in the last couple of weeks, eight to seven, not a ton, but you know, maybe they feel more comfortable with Ty Montgomery in a catch up mode if somehow the Dolphins get up early. So in that kind of game script, I think Montgomery might have more value. But, uh, again, we're all, we're, we're all guessing here yeah. until we get confirmation from beat reporters. Yep, absolutely. And let me just check. It looks like uh, the last thing updated for the model for him to uh, – for Bell to be taken out. So let me go ahead and get that all set up for you all. And then we'll see where he ranks, where they, nice. where they rank. Nice um, live update. Uh, Helmy's father says, what's your prediction for John Ross this week? Yeah, I, I – Admittedly, haven't heard much. They said he'll have a role. Mm-hmm. We'll see how much he gets because he's been on injury reserve for, you know, since like week three or four. So um, I, I would imagine he's out there probably for a handful of snaps 
maybe you know 30 40 percent maybe again we'll have to see what the beat reporters say but i think boyd and tate get most of the snaps and then maybe he'll split some with erickson just because of the, the long absence so uh, i wouldn't be expecting too much from him at least not in his first week back off of fire yep and so all right so with blah pow in again i know the model so well um you might can we pull it up yeah let's pull it up i mean this is important i think so yeah so what you'll see, what you guys see here on the screen that's loading up is the um, Occupy Fantasy Occupy model. Ranks all the players on DraftKings, FanDuel, and Yahoo, as well as some projected ownership and betting odds and some other underlying stats. If we take a look here, Blau Pau is ranked probably, what, 15th, 20th? With an OF index on DraftKings of 25.5 on FanDuel of 27. Um, I'm a beast. And I said between 25 and 30. Yeah, or well, 20 and 30. You, yeah. you are the creator of the model. so <laughs> Now, I assume that uh, you know ownership does play a part, and our ownership doesn't run um, you know, until Sunday morning. The next update is when that will happen. His ownership, I assume, will skyrocket from 1%. Uh, so, yeah, so his OV index probably will end up with around 30 or so um, as we iron out some of the last details. So take that for what it's worth. Yeah, again, um, ownership is important for the running back position in, in NFL DFS. Mm -hmm. And the higher his ownership goes, the more his OFN index will likely increase. So if with 24 hours, basically, until the slate starts, um, I imagine he'll end up 20% plus ownership. And that, like you said, that should boost his his, uh, his outlook. So. Yeah, and as Jake asked, you know, what do you think his ownership's going to be? i say probably, probably 30 to 40%. That's about right for me, I think. Yeah. Yep. Um, Bismo is in the chat. He says, hey, and he has a big day tomorrow. Um, is there a big contest on tomorrow? Yeah, so Bismo, one of our – if you don't know Bismo or you're not in the Discord, Bismo is one of our longtime members, and he has a ton of entries into the $18 uh, experience players excluded uh, WFFC fan championship qualifier. Oh, so yeah, yeah, one, yeah. Out of, one out of every – not 15. What is it? One out of every seven or I think eight so, yeah. entries get uh, a $250 ticket to the online championship next week. And Bismo has a ton of entries. And it's a, it's a soft field. Experienced players excluded. So, a uh, big chance for Bismo to have a huge bankroll booster by getting some entries into that uh, that online final, which is, I think, with Rake included, it'll be like 16,000 people with uh, millions of first. Yeah. And he has a question you know, about about his entries. He said sixteen uh, percent actually cash. Does he go a hundred a hundred percent Blau at thirty four entries? Yeah, uh, um, this is a question you'll have to you have to figure out. Uh, we'll, we'll see how he looks in the model tomorrow morning, Bismo. But it also depends on your goals. Like if you're trying to get as many tickets as possible and you don't care if you get zero, my advice would either be to go with Pal in all of your lineups or none of your lineups. Mm -hmm. um, if you're playing it safe and you just want a couple tickets, and you can still get a ton of tickets this way too, probably just match the field. I think that's probably the safest route. If he ends up 30 40%, put him in 30 40%. But if you have a strong feeling about Powell and you think he'll he'll exceed expectations, um, definitely put him in all 100%. And not, yeah, no, great great idea. Now, you know, we talk about this with, with satellites. Do you think it makes sense for someone like Bismo at 34 entries not to do 34 lineups but say – seven lineups and enter them multiple times so if one hits he's getting multiple tickets that's also not a, a bad idea at all because bismo if you can hop in the chat let us know how many total tickets are awarded in that contest and how many how many total entries are there because this could be uh that's actually a very interesting idea moose yeah i know i know we talk about it before when you know we used to talk about it uh with you know like the three to five like the three entry max uh for some of the satellites just put the same lineup in three times so if it hits you get the tickets um yeah that's actually yeah that, that's not a bad idea and actually that might be the way to go especially if Bismo, you're not used to creating that many lineups like if you normally create five to ten twenty lineups a week um then maybe if, if you're used to making tons and tons of lineups, then yeah, you could probably make 34. But uh, I really do like that idea, Moose. We'll, mm -hmm. uh, we'll wait on Bismo's answer for how many total tickets are awarded and how many total people are in the contest. But uh, I like that idea. Yep. And while we wait for that, uh, let's talk about the second game to stack. Is that Indy at Tampa Bay game that, that Chris wrote about. 
Yes. Uh, do you have any opinions on that game? I love this game. Okay. Um, but the betting markets don't necessarily agree right now. As of the lines opening, let's bring it up to make sure I have the right number. Uh, that game total has dropped three and a half points, opened 50 and a half. It's down to 47. Um, so yeah, not excited about that. However, there are just too many guys in this game that I like. All the guys on Indy side are way too cheap. And of course you have Mike Evans, who is the most underperforming receiver of the last three weeks, mm-hmm. the God, Chris Godwin. So you could get those two guys from Tampa, but just run them in a bunch of lines. And you have Zach Pascal, Paris Campbell, Jack Doyle on the other side. I mean, I, I really, really, this is probably my favorite game of the weekend. Jeez. And I know uh, back earlier, I think it was AJ that said it. He says he thinks that the Colts are actually going to be uh, a top three defense this week because Jameis is going to be bad Jameis this week. Yeah. I, I guess you think he's going to be good this week, right? Uh, I don't fucking know. But I think, <laughs> I think even if he's not great, that Indy is going to have success through the air. Yeah. So, um, I mean, Pascal's too cheap. He's on the underperforming receivers list. Uh, Paris Campbell's been heavily involved when he's been on the field without T.Y. Hilton. Mm -hmm. And he's mad cheap on both sides. And then Jack Doyle, obviously, his involvement's through the roof with Ebron off the field. Yep. Um, So, abysmal answer, he said there's 225 tickets for 3,750 entries. Yeah. That's enough tickets to where if it feels like five tickets – Right then, um, it'd be really tough because very easily um, you could have a lineup that finishes in the top like ten or fifteen, mm-hmm. but not top five, and you miss out just barely for three tickets or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, however, with that many tickets, you can you can be in the top, you know, ten percent with a couple lineups. So I, honestly, with with thirty four entries, um, I would probably do somewhere between five and 10 lineups multiple times, mm-hmm. maybe 10 lineups, three times each or 11 times, three t- 11 lineups, three times each. Um, yeah. Cause, cause that said, way, yeah. Cause you, he says you, next, you got a legit chance. Yeah. Cause the next comment he says he's never made more than 20 for a single slate. Yeah. I, I would, I wouldn't make it t- tough on yourself. Then I would make multiple, uh, you know, a couple lineups, maybe five to 10, five to 11, answer them three to four times each. And that way if one hits you, you got multiple tickets coming home. Yep. And uh, so I see here, Frosty Steez, just subscribe with Twitch Prime. That's awesome, man. Glad to have you on board here. Um, go ahead and reach out to us to, to get access to the Discord link, and uh, we'll send that over to you. Where, send that over to you right away. He's also shared five emotes. Uh, I still don't know what that means, but uh, basically, basically, people who aren't subscribers, mm-hmm. whatever five random people he just selected, get if they're not already a, a subscriber to us on Twitch. They get access to the emotes for however long. Oh, nice. Know. Nice. Yeah, so, so the chaos. And the, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I just went ahead and put that in the chat. And, you know, we got access now to a third emote that we can submit. Um, so if you if you guys want to be a suggestion on that, just say, hey, maybe can you have this as the emote or that as the emote, put it in the chat. We'll uh, put it for consideration as we submit it to Twitch. Uh, but, yeah, again, Fro- to. Yeah, but again, Frosty, thank you again for, for subscribing. That really means a lot. Yeah, thank you, Frosty. And... That hashtag chaos emoji moose. I'm gonna be wearing that T-shirt next Sunday, hoping yeah. for some chaos in Puerto Rico. Yeah. So for those that don't know, as it says here on the screen, uh, Brian, you have two entries into the WFFC, uh, Fantasy Football World Football Championship, whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's gonna be really fun. Um, so we all leave for Puerto Rico on Thursday. Um, that's gonna be really fun, man. Two out of eighty. Hell yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try and do some some stuff down there. Definitely follow us on Twitter, and um, we're gonna post a lot of stuff on Instagram too. So be mm-hmm. sure to follow at Occupy Fantasy on Instagram. We don't post a bunch of stuff there, but uh, we'll try to record as much of the stuff as we can from down there on, on our Instagram. So yeah, we may not be able to set up for the full Twitch stream because there are a lot of resources that require a Twitch stream to be to uh, be done. <laughs> True, but um, so we may we may hop on Periscope, uh, something of that nature. That's not um, a bad idea for Saturday night. Yeah, so yeah. definitely check us out. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Occupy Fantasy. We'll let you know all the details. Yes, cool. can't wait. All right, cool. And then this last game, uh, Miami at Jets. I guess we kind of already talked about that. Do you, is there any really more detail we need to go into? Yeah, there's not a ton from Miami side, but uh, what you what you'll need to know is Kalen Blage after his 
historically inefficient season, went on injured reserve. And Patrick Laird, who was a joke of a fantasy football play a couple weeks ago, is now a real fantasy football play. Super cheap, pretty high in the model. Um, gets work in the passing game. Definitely part of the game stack and definitely part of uh, part of any lineups consideration based on his price and likely usage. Yeah, I mean, definitely agree with you there. Um, that game total most, by the way, has gone up two points, one of the biggest moves of the week. Wow. So from 44 to 46. Okay, nice. I mean, you know, that... Uh... Oh uh, shit! What was I about? I, I was about to say something about totals and movements, but I, I saw my Chick Fil A bag that I'm eat, <laughs> that I'm eating after this and just lost all hope. Forgot yeah. exactly what I was gonna say. You got some Chick Fil A sauce in there, right? Nope, not a single drop. <laughs> <laughs> um, looking at t- t- totals moves this week, most uh, fortunately, there's nothing like last week with total moves and the entire slate being shitty. But mm-hmm. Jets and Miami have gone up two points. The Houston game's gone up a point. Buffalo and Baltimore has gone up a point, despite the weather. Um, Oakland, Tennessee up a point. And then uh, the Arizona-Pittsburgh game up a half point. And then on the flip side, like I said, the Indian Tampa Bay game has a big drop. And then as well as Kansas City, New England, and Cincinnati and Cleveland with a point and a half drop in the total. Yeah. Um, real quick, um, Jake has a question. It says, you know, what do you think the ownership is going to be for Powell for Atlanta based on people who just clicked the wrong name? Over under point one percent, probably over. Uh, probably, it would not surprise me. Yeah, Brandon <laughs> Brandon Powell, the receiver. Yeah, team preseason play, but yeah. And uh, speaking of that Miami game, uh, Helmy's father has a question. Says, "Who do you, who would you stack with Fitz and Parker? Is it Gasecki? You could do Gasecki. You could do Allen Hearns, who's had a decent role um, since Preston Williams went down. You could also do Patrick Laird, the running back, uh, with his involvement in the passing game. I think my preferred stack is Fitz, Parker, and Laird." Uh, and then running back with either Bilal Powell or one of the Jets receivers, but but yeah. Uh, uh, all right, I'm so glad someone actually asked this, but yeah, does Moose not like Chick Fil A sauce? Um, I don't have an opinion on it. it. It doesn't taste good. It doesn't taste bad. It just it is what it is. Terrible. And opinion. if it's lose. good, Moose does not like it. That's the fact. <laughs> and we're going to drop very much uh, huh. in viewers from now. Um, Jake says, "Am I wrong in thinking Fitzmagic doesn't check down to wide receivers much? Does he?" I don't know. I mean, so it's running backs, right? Yeah, it's running backs. Um, I mean, I think his nature—it looks like he doesn't check down a bunch. But um, if you look at the last few weeks, I mean, if you just look in general this this year, so total running back targets for Miami this season by week. Mm-hmm. So four, thirteen, nine, eight. 15, 5, 7, 5, 7, 13, 3, and 7. So many times this year, he's, he's thrown to a running back five or more times in a game. Um, and Laird should be that guy this week. So while Fitzpatrick's reputation as a gunslinger uh, obviously precedes him, he does check down, at least this year, relatively often to running back. Yep. Um, it looks like we got some uh, more comments in the chat. Sean Perry, 89. Uh, who is a subscriber, Twitch Prime subscriber. I'm not sure if you're in the Discord. Again, guys, if you are a subscriber and you don't have access to the Discord channel, reach out to us. We'll, we'll get you all set up there so you can come join us uh, after the Twitch. Um, you know, he has a question. Is it the Bilal Pow weekend? We mentioned it very early in the stream, but we, you know, we've gotten some new people since then. Uh, yeah. Pretty yeah. Much. Yeah. It is. <laughs> um, Frosty says, I hope it's Jameson Crowder weekend for fantasy player purpose for fantasy playoff purposes. Um, yeah, I think I think it'll be relatively popular too. Yeah. Um Jake says, What's your thoughts on Aaron Rodgers this week? Yeah, so his splits haven't been as extreme as Jared Goff this year, but Rodgers' his performances versus top half of the de- top half of the league defenses versus bottom half are pretty startling and uh the Redskins as many know are not a top half of the league defense <laughs> so uh you know as one of the higher team totals of the week I think they're 13 point favorites I think Rogers probably in a good spot so um we'll see his touchdowns have come in bunches this year versus bad teams and mm-hmm. the Redskins definitely qualifies a bad team <laughs> yeah they're definitely not good um Let's see here. Yeah, we'll be here for another 10 minutes or so. If you have any questions, guys, definitely go ahead and ask. Uh, we'll see if we can go ahead and get them answered for you. Let's. Can we take a look at the quarterback model, look at the team total moves? Yeah, let's do it. Cool. So let me go ahead and just give this one quick refresh here to get the most updated information for the model. 
Again, guys, you can check this out at OccupyFantasy.com. Membership as low as $2, $2 per week with the annual subscription. Um, you get access to everything that we offer, all the different sports, the write-ups, the models. Really, really good. Really, really awesome time. Excuse me. So with that being said, let's take a look at team total moves. And as you said, Miami leading the pack is the only team with over a two-point move since opening, plus 2.25 points. The other teams with uh, at least one or higher, you have Houston at plus 1.75, Arizona plus 1.5, and Tennessee at plus 1.25. Yeah, some some pretty big moves, honestly, despite uh, game totals not being huge moves. Yep. Yep, and uh, let's see. Jake says, does, does Julio still have a pulse? Jeez. He, he was on the underperforming receiver list before he missed last week's game, so by definition, he still should carry over to this week. And uh, if he's playing, he's going to be good. It was more just a, a strength issue with his shoulder, and it was just a short week he couldn't get there. So um, he's still Julio and probably won't score a touchdown, but he's in a smash spot. And if you stack that game, you should have him. And if you don't if you don't stack the game, you should still probably consider Yep. Um, Lucas, for those who don't know, uh, has, is our college football writer. He has a question. says, Carolina tight end, Ian Thomas, Ben Price. What are your thoughts on that? He came in last week, was immediately targeted. Now, granted, they were in catch-up mode versus the Redskins, um, but he got like four targets in a couple of minutes. Uh, yeah. He's an athletic dude and second, I think, third year in the league. And he uh, he's at Ben Price, so it's pretty pretty affordable, obviously. The only concern is interim head coach uh, Perry Fuel said that they're going to use a committee at tight end for whatever reason, but he he named like the random backup tight end and the fullback. So I don't know what he's talking about. I, I would assume Thomas plays a ton of snap and at that mm-hmm. price, especially low risk. You have to like him. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you on that. Um, <laughs> imagine playing basically two men price guys, him and Bilal and just, You'll leave like ten thousand left over. <laughs> yeah, you can play Christian McCaffrey, Michael Thomas, and Lamar Jackson. Yeah, that'll be uh, nice. And for those who don't know, Lucas's college football plug is absolutely a beast. It's been crushing. We just added this same uh, thing that you know we have our underperforming by low wide receivers for NFL. We've added that for college as well. So that's in the daily plug. So go ahead and check that out. Um, yes, pretty pretty interesting. So. Yep, and as you answered Frosty on how to get access to Discord, if you still can't, if you still having trouble to figure it out, you can just DM us on Twitter and we'll get you set up. Yeah, so Discord has been having issues connecting our members, um, and they said everything's fine on their side. So if you using those instructions in the chat, if that doesn't work for you, if you connect your Twitch or your Discord to your Twitch account in the connections tab on Discord, and once you do that, our server should pop up immediately right there in that same page. If it doesn't pop up, send in a support ticket to discord and let them know what server you're trying to join so they can get to the bottom of it and then if you can't get it dm us either on occupy or one of our personal accounts uh and we'll send you the direct link if it doesn't work yep um yeah and as lucas said our underperforming uh wide receiver scored a touchdown john hightower whoop whoop for like cre- create a player name <laughs> yeah um there was i think only a handful of them uh this week but uh they crushed i think out of the seven we've recommended the last two weeks, uh, only one didn't get the flame badge. Pretty nice. That's pretty sick. That is pretty nice. Speaking of underperforming guys, this week is another huge list. Last week was huge. Uh, so for high risk concept, I think the same conversation we had last week was about flexing a wide receiver, just because there are so many of those guys to take advantage of. Yeah, especially in high risk. You know, when we we normally play the the underperforming wide receivers in high risk, some of them do qualify for low risk as well. Uh, but oh, yeah. if if you have several let me see did it get unplugged how's it sound now you're good now i don't know what the hell just happened all right. Well, that was weird. Okay, but we're back though. Everyone yeah. in the chat. So. Yep. There we go. All right. I think we're good now. Can Can we say in the chat if uh, we're good? Let's wait for a little bit. Hopefully, yeah. if you guys can hear most, let us know just to make sure. Yeah. Because I can hear you now. So hopefully we're good. Okay. Cool. Um, 
Jake has a question. Is that what's your thought on Drew Brees at 5,900? Um, that's why I pull him up here. See where he ranks in the model. Find him. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's pretty far down. Yeah, I mean, obviously a tough matchup. What's the total in that game? Pretty low, right? Uh, yeah, 44 and a half. It's dropped 1.5 since opening. Um, so yeah. what, 46 it opened? Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of Breeze this week. Uh, I know it's the cheapest he's been at home literally ever. <laughs> so uh, still, I, I don't think it's a spot we can take advantage of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, and I see we just got the follower notification from, from Help Mija. I get, I'm probably butchering your name wrong. Uh, but thank you for the follow. Really appreciate that, bro or madam. Um, yeah, if you guys like what we do, definitely go ahead and hit that follow button. Show your support for us. That's really cool. Yeah, uh, yeah Devlin Hodges, Drew Brees, same price. And I probably Jeez. prefer Devlin Hodges. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I should, I'd even pay down for David Blow. Blow. Wow, at 5200 yeah jesus yep. so all right so rapid fire guys three minutes until we're out of here um go ahead and rapid fire your questions before we get out of here if, if you're a subscriber you can continue to ask questions here on the discord not here but on discord um we don't get to them right away cause we're busy doing stuff <laughs> but uh yeah it should be fun um question for you brian yes if i can Figure out where I wrote it down. <laughs> Struggling with. Yeah, I am. Um, we talked about, you know, for tight ends, we talked about how normally you don't like to overpay for tight ends. I don't like to do it as well either. Um, there's one tight end that kind of stands out for me is, where is it? So, again, it goes with that that Chargers Jacksonville. But Hunter Henry, um, he's one of the more expensive tight ends do you have a, any opinion on him whatsoever this week yeah he had a dud game last week but uh, he should be in a bounce back spot had been doing really well in every single game since returning so, uh i'm a fan of henry i think like you said you like that that game is a stack this week a stack target uh, uh under the radar i like it too and i think henry's part of that discussion yep um I see we got Radatar here in the chat uh he's been i uh, haven't seen him in a while so we'll go ahead and we'll answer this one question for him he says OBJ or Landry. Uh, I will be playing all Odell Beckham. I'll be playing zero Jarvis Landry. Odell Beckham is on the underperforming list. Jarvis Landry is not. And, and as a result, Jarvis Landry will outscore him. <laughs> just because yeah. he will. And Jake says, I just made a lineup and fit in Mike Thomas, Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, and Mike Evans at wide receiver. Is that too good? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow they're going to score 10 combined points. Yeah. Um, yeah. and I don't know how you want to answer this, Brian, but Helmy's father, who is a Twitch Prime subscriber, says, "What are your favorite three three defenses this week?" Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and answer it. And again, I mostly just go straight from the model when I make my 150. I'll uh, I'll just pick the top ones from the model and then go down a little bit further for some cheaper ones. But for me, the Cardinals rank really highly on FanDuel and DraftKings. Mm -hmm. uh, the Packers, obviously, uh, uh, the Chargers, and then I also like Atlanta too uh, against Carolina. So those are some some defenses for you. Yeah, I, I, I'm one of the guys who will absolutely pay down in defenses just because I know this may be a square thing to say, but defenses I would say are some of the more volatile positions. One one slip up from the quarterback and you got to pick six, and now you're absolutely crushing value. So I'd rather yeah. not overpay a thousand fifteen hundred or so. Especially, especially in high risk contests. So someone like Cincinnati, who's who ranks pretty high in our model at only twenty one hundred, I'm not even being biased there. Um, uh, is probably one of my my good ones there. Yeah, I mean, look, a lot of these teams that rank high in the model, betting market moves, mm -hmm. and you look at the Bengals are playing the Browns, who have a two and a, nearly two and a half point team total drop. So big, big driving force for the Bengals ranking as high as they do at that cheap price. Yep, definitely agree with you on that. So let's see. All right, last question from questions from Jake. Um, Boyd or Metcalf in season long? Note Penny is also in the lineup. Um, I go, go Boyd. Okay. And Ravens defense stay uh, mid -pri priced. I can never get off. Is that a bad move? No. In bad weather versus Josh Allen, who I know has played better as of late, um, I still can't get over the fact. You look at the Ravens defense have pretty big OF index moves in the model. 
I do think they're too cheap for the the game environment, the spread, and the uh, the weather conditions. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, all right. So, any last words before you, I take us out of here, Brian? Uh, I don't think so. Just keep an eye on the plug. We still have one more injury situation. Uh, it sounds like Josh Jacobs will play, but just keep an eye on it. And and not if not. And then uh, Chris will be on the Occupy Fantasy Twitter account Periscope tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern. Be sure to drop in there for your Sunday morning question. Makes sense. So, all right. With that being said, I'm Moose. You can follow me on Twitter at CFB underscore Moose. You can follow Brian at Brian Jester FF. You can follow the Occupy Fantasy at Occupy Fantasy. Check out the website, OccupyFantasy.com. Membership is low as $2 per week. You get access to all sports that we offer. That includes the college football daily plug, the NFL daily plug and Occupy model, the NHL model, and NBA plug and NBA model. All of them have been fire. Definitely, definitely go ahead and check it out. Um, that being said, check out the Periscope tomorrow at 11 a.m. You can follow us on Twitter. You'll get notified of when you, with that will go live. And I think that's it. I think we covered it all. Cool. All right. Well, have a good night, guys, and we'll see you later. I'm Peace.